don't know if I have You guys believe in God? You said, sure. You do? He said that uh, there are no offensive questions. Yeah, so I'll try. Uh, did Mohammed have uh, child rights? Okay, so you're talking about Aisha. I don't know. Yeah, so. I heard that he had a wife who was nine years old. Who was nine years old, yes. How do you define a child? Nine and younger. Based on which standards? Who made that rule? I have a. We have a daughter who's eight. Yeah, I mean, nine. but the thing is, you see, there were different standards in different times. So if you look, even in this country, there were certain kings and queens who had child marriage. At that time, it was perfectly normal. Nobody would bat an eyelid. And it happened all around the globe, not just in the UK or in Arabia. It happened all around the world. So the thing is, you see, our perception of the definition of a child, of a girl, of a woman changes. But a girl who is nine years old has not reached puberty. No, no. We, say that, so. If they haven't reached puberty, then you can't get married in Islam. So that's one of the conditions. So the other condition is like, it's not just the age, it's also the mental capacity and the physical capacity. So there are quite a few things in Islam, we believe, which uh, factor in when you marry someone. By the way, the term marriage in Islam, we need to be careful about this. Because there's two. One is the betrothal, yeah, which is called engagement normally. So you, you get engaged to someone, and that can be done at any age. It's no fast rule. But you cannot consummate the marriage, yeah, which is actual the physical contact, isn't it? So you can't do that until they've reached the age of puberty. The other thing is they should be mentally uh, fit uh, and physically fit to have that. But you see, look, today if you ask me, will you give your nine-year-old in a marriage to someone who is old? I would say no, because today's generation is different. The way they, the upbringing is different. Back then, you know, 14-year-old and even 12-year-old, children, which we call children today, they used to be the commanders of armies. Today they're playing with the Xbox, yeah? They're playing games, they're playing video games and stuff like that. We can't, we can't then say, use presentism, which is a fallacy actually. So we are comparing today's standards with the standards 1400 years ago, yeah? More than a thousand years ago. I agree. Yeah, so we have to be careful because you see, if you look at the history of say, the United States, certain states didn't even have an age uh, which was like the legal age of marriage. Yeah, some of them had like six, some had 12. And as time passed, progress, they would increase. And today, many I've seen, that some of them are even decreasing. It was 21 years of uh, age, and before that you can't get married, so they decreased it to 18 or something like that. Yeah, maybe in Italy, I think it's 16 or 14. Yeah. So like I said, look, every country, every, every legislation has different, in the same. By the way, the prophet, peace be upon him, his first wife was older than him. So if he was indeed someone, you know, who was attracted to young girls, then that would be his first marriage. If you look throughout his life, Yes, he had, um, I think, up to 11 wives, and only one of them who was actually <laughs> a virgin. Yes, the others were either, uh, yeah, they were widows or divorcees or something, which shows that many times what happened in these circumstances, they would want to establish certain uh, connection with another tribe. So in order to bring the tribes together, they would actually use this kind of uh, marriages to bring the tribes together. And this was the purpose maybe is not but many people think you know today for example you know there are many young girls who get who get pregnant teenage pregnancies has become quite widespread in europe in america i think even in asian countries now because of the progression of uh, the internet and unfortunately the pornography you know which has an impact on the young people and because of that many young children which you would consider as children get pregnant so teenage pregnancy is is, is kind of a um, it's kind of a problem with many countries and they spend a lot of money for the abortion, for the care, uh, for, you know, a lot of things take place in this kind of situations, isn't it? The well-being, the mental well-being of the, of, of the girl and also the boy who are involved in this, a lot of things. So what I'm saying is that in order for us to look at a few things, we have to consider the circumstance, the time period and obviously the situation as well. Yeah, because every, everything is, can be different. I have one uh, yeah. question, question more. Sorry, can I ask you a quick question? You said you believe in God. Yeah, yeah? not Muslims. So you're Christian? Yeah. Okay, now your understanding of Christianity is based on the Bible. But 
sure. Yeah? But I have one question. Yeah. But can I ask you one after that? Maybe. What do you mean maybe? Why would you not answer because my question? We, we don't have so much time. We need to... Uh, but you have time to ask another question to me? Yes. Because okay. I have two minutes. Okay. Uh, but I can't answer in two minutes. So I can't uh, guarantee that. We'll try. We'll try. Yeah. Do you uh, see, consider any, any faults with Muhammad? Did he... Have if you any, consider, did he have any flaws? Yeah, if you consider flaws with the with the prophets of the Bible, for example, they fought wars. Yes, they killed many people. Yes, would you consider that as a flaw? But no, uh, don't ask. Don't answer with a counter question. Uh, Why? Well, it's, it's a part of logic. You can ask with a counter question. Because I'm trying to understand what's your understanding of flaw. No, would you use the same standard for the no, prophets in the Bible? That's the question. It's just I'm. You consider, you don't consider Muhammad as a god, right? He's not of a course god. not. Yeah. He's a prophet. Yes. Uh, He's a human being. Yeah. And he was a prophet and a messenger of God. Yeah. And and do we or you as Muslims have to follow every instructions that he has um, pulled out? Yeah. In the from the authentic hadith and from the Quran, we follow and obey Allah and the Rasul. And are and are there any obeys? from uh, Muhammad, where you are like, ah, no. maybe we If should. it's an authentic hadith, we follow it. The reason, look, you need to understand, because you, you, you use the term flaw, because I'm trying to understand what you mean by that. What is, have you got something up there that you want to tell me? What, what would you consider a flaw? You don't consider Muhammad perfect, right? He's a, he's, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a human being. He's a human being, but as far as his message... I'm not perfect, you're not perfect. Yeah, but you need to understand. He's, he's almost perfect. <laughs> uh, but was he what, perfect? What is your understanding of the term perfect? Again. Did he make mistakes? Mistakes in the deen? No. Mistakes in religion? When it comes to injunctions of the religion? Then no. Personal mistakes? Yeah, I can find mistakes of Jesus in the Bible. Would you then reject him? No, but now we're talking I want to, about the Quran, right? No, no, I'm asking if you, if you use the same standards. In order for you to approach both the Bible and the Quran, would you use the same standards? So if I show you Jesus committing you, sins in the Bible, I can, I can would you then you, reject him? I can tell you yeah. that the Christian view is that Jesus was perfect and all the prophets were flawed. They How were, can Jesus be perfect, perfect when the Bible says he, he's a sinner? The Bible doesn't say he's a sinner. Shall I show you one? No. You don't want me to show you? You can. Sure. Okay, I'll show you. Would you consider racism as, as a flaw, as a sin? Racism. To be racist to some other race or people. I'm just telling what the general perspective is about from the Christian view about Jesus and the prophet. And I'm asking you, do you consider um, Muhammad as a perfect human being? I've already answered the question. Yeah. Are you filming? Uh, is, is this going on the net? Yeah. YouTube? Yeah. Can you written me? You can, you can film it, no problem. Yeah. We are already being filmed. Yeah. That's fine. So, what, what, so look, the reason I asked you about listen, Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. Yeah. The greatest uh, apostle in the Bible is Paul. Paul. Self appointed apostle. Paul. Yeah. And every Christian thinks Paul was a human being with, which made mistakes. And he was not perfect. He was a human being with a lot of flaws and a lot of. Yeah. Uh, Okay. He sinned a lot, if you can put it that way. Yeah. Sorry, English is not my first language. No, that's fine. By the way, my name is Hashim. What's your name? Oli. Oli? Yeah. Okay, nice so, meeting you, Oli. So, so my question you know, is, was Muhammad yeah. the perfect? Jesus? You know, I you asked me to show you where Jesus sinned. I was going to show you, but you don't want to see some for some reason. So let me yeah. let me tell you anyway. If, if somebody considers racism... So you don't want to answer the question if Muhammad was a perfect... Actually, I did already. Do you think you, Muhammad was a perfect human being? In a deen, yeah. In a deen. He never sins. Prophets don't he, commit sins. He never stepped. Uh, he never made that mistake. Well, show me the sin of uh, Muhammad then. Go on. What do you think? I'm, I'm ignorant. Yeah. What? I'm ignorant. I know nothing. But why? You know, if you, were, if you were an objective person, why don't you want to listen to the sin that's in the Bible? Is it, is it like some sort of a mental block no. you want to put? So this, let me, let me finish. About, this is not about me. This is about Muhammad. No, no, but... It's you who stand up. Yeah, I know. But, you, but you're I'm, a Christian. I'm just coming by. You're a Christian, right? Doesn't matter. So it does matter? No, this is about Muhammad. Okay, so you're saying you would not use the same standard for Jesus? No, I'm just asking what, you, what your view is about Muhammad. I gave you my view, yeah. but you didn't like it, maybe. Thank you.
if if Jesus sinned, and by the way, he called a woman, yes, that you are dogs. How can how can somebody call a woman who comes to his help and he says, do not give the bread of the children to the dogs? We're discussing Muhammad. We're not discussing. I have already answered your question, but you don't want to accept it, my friend. Thank you. But anyway, no problem. You know. So, Alhamdulillah, you know, as Muslims, we use certain standards when we look at different religions. Where can I uh, see it on the internet? Yeah, it's on Dawah Wise channel. Huh? Dawah Wise is written here. You can take a picture if you want. Yeah. Oh. Just a minute, yeah. So, what I'm saying is that if these Christians, if they come here and they ask questions, I was hoping that they would use the same standards to look both the Quran and the Bible. So, if Jesus calls somebody a dog, then I think you should condemn that. Because a woman came for his help and he called her, I do not cause the bread of the children to the dogs. Okay, because of the... Muhammad. Sorry? Sorry? I've already answered the question about Muhammad, but you didn't like my answer maybe. And he's perfect. No problem. Yes, he is. In the deen he is. In the deen he's perfect. And Jesus is not perfect according to the Bible. In fact, he's called the curse by Paul. You mentioned Paul, isn't it? In Galatians 3.13, it says he became, a, he became a curse. So definitely not perfect according to the Bible. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.